everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. Oh my gosh, you guys. Uh, uh, one of my viewers who's been with me from the very beginning, Jima B. That's what I call her. It, it might be Jima. 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 G-M-A space B. <laughs> she left a comment on a video last... Hi, by the way. Thank you for your comment. She left a comment on a video last night that said, I miss you. <laughs> so... Yeah, um, I haven't been putting out as many videos, although the last video I did was just five days ago. And the one before that was like three days. You know, when I do tutorials and stuff, there's a, a, lot, of, a lot of times I'm just visiting with you guys. And I think that's what she meant, just sitting down to visit. It is bright and early on a Saturday morning and I should not be here. I should be on my way to Austin, Texas. Hold on a minute, I gotta take a sip of coffee. <sighs> Y'all, there's just so much going on. To make time for stitching, time for making videos, to edit the videos, that's the hard part, is to edit the videos. Wait, what is this? Somebody's buzzing me. Oh, it's my husband, he's in Port O'Connor. Hold on a second. I mean, I gotta take a break to talk to my husband. He's down in Port O'Connor. He had to go down there, we have a boat. Uh, we have a house in Port O'Connor, a little weekend getaway place. And that's on the Texas Gulf Coast, about halfway between Houston and Corpus Christi. Like right on the corner of the Matagorda Bay. And uh, we've had that place almost 10 years now. We really enjoy going down there. But the boat had to go to uh, the boat place for, it has a, it had a, it has a thing, it, um, flaps, uh, what, fins, trim tabs, that's it, whatever those are. <laughs> you boat people know what those are. And it's so busy to get your boat in, you know, the guy is so busy that uh, you have to call like a month or six weeks in advance. And then when he calls you and say, okay, you can bring it in, you need to skedaddle down there and go get it drop it off and then wait for four to six weeks till you get it back or however long but they're pretty good about it anyway so he's down there taking care of that and he decided he's not going to come home today because he's going to stay up there down there to watch the uh, Texas Alabama game which is going on in Austin so let's get back to Austin this weekend so I'm a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution. I've got a Revolutionary War ancestor or 13 or so. And they are having, the Texas Daughters are having their fall forum in Austin today. And I bought tickets, I registered, which was like 30 bucks, and then $57 for a buffet lunch, a buffet, $57. Ugh, crazy. And then, you know, seminar fees and blah, blah, blah. And by the time it was all said and done, it was like 130 bucks to register for this fall form. And I was just going to drive up today and drive back this afternoon. Well, y'all, I hate to drive in city traffic. I hate it. We live not even in the suburbs. We live in the country. And I love living in the country. And, you know, my idea of a traffic jam is a cattle trailer and um, a disc going down the road or a rake or something like that, which is big farming equipment, you know, ranching equipment. So I was dreading it. And all last night I was like, you know, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And then this morning when I woke up, I remembered there's a football game in Austin today between Texas Longhorns and Alabama. There is no way on God's green earth I am driving up there to put myself into the middle of that at the Renaissance in Austin. Hotel, the hotel, no way, no way. I don't understand why the traffic is so stinking bad in Austin. TxDOT, the Texas Department of Transportation, is headquartered in Austin. I mean, that's their backyard. It's the worst traffic in the state. I'd rather drive in Houston than drive in Austin. You know, they even have double-decker highways on I-35 that run straight through the city. Bumper to bumper, both of them stopped all the time. It's awful. And if you're ever traveling this direction, north, south, south, north, whatever, and you have to drive through Austin, y'all need to get on that State Highway 130. It's a toll road. 
pay the 12 bucks or 18 bucks or whatever it is and go all the way around. It's 85 miles an hour and you miss all of that. But to put myself into downtown Austin on a game day is, uh, I, there's just, there's just no way my nerves, I can't handle it. So I, I told my husband, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to Austin, not going to do it with the traffic. And he texts me back and he said, sissy, <laughs> teasing me. Hold on, more coffee. Y'all, I drink coffee like a fiend. It's, it's it, it's crazy. I have three cups every morning and I don't get jittery or anything. And I'm a black rifle coffee girl. Gotta support my vets, right? So I got their subscription. It's an annual subscription. Come to find out it's cheaper to do that than it is to go buy coffee, you know, because you get a discount, whatever. But, so what have I been up to? I have a lot of events coming up the next two weeks. Let me get my calendar and I'll tell you. So on the 14th, Sewing Machines Plus, they're out of California. They are having a live, uh, like a sew, sew fest, and I'm part of the lineup for that. So I'm going to be doing live streaming with them on Wednesday, September 14th at 10 Pacific. So I think that's noon for me, I hope. I got a meeting with them ahead of time and whatnot. I'm going to be going over how to cut fabric with the Scan and Cut. I might show how to do it from the Luminaire over to the Scan and Cut and just do that. I'm not real sure right now, but yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing on the 14th. And then the 20th, they have a Takeover Tuesday. And I've got some time on there. Also, I'm showing again how to cut fabric using a Scan and Cut. I've got stuff to get ready to do to get ready for that. And one of the things I've been doing is, so when you're doing a live show like that, you, you generally want to keep your project kind of small, like a mug rug or a simple shape that you can cut out just for the demo. But I want to show a very large project as an example of once you master this skill, then, then you can do, you know, this big project and make your life easier. So what I'm doing is this pattern. It's called Gnome for the Holidays. It's a bench pillow and table runner. Let me show you. So this pattern is just absolutely adorable. Look at that. And there are these trees. There's one, two, three, four, and then five. I'm sorry about the glare, guys. I'm trying to get this right. So there's five trees in this thing, and they're made up of four pieces each, except for the one that's in front of the truck on the sled. And then the three gnomes, so there's three pairs of pants, three beards, three hats, all of that. So I cut out all of the pieces. You can kind of see them right here. So I've cut out all of these pieces. And I laid them all out on a piece of, it feels like tearaway stabilizer. I had it on a bolt. I don't know where I got it from but just to be able to see how it was all going to lay out. And then over here, I printed all of the shapes onto dimes, print and stick target paper. So I can align everything up and get it into the embroidery machine to make it all work. Right. So I've got all these pieces. It's like, here's the tree. And I'll just use this one over and over and over. So if you're new to my channel, one of the very cool things that I like to do is to take paper applique patterns. So you have, you get paper pieces, okay? You'll get a pattern in a paper applique pattern. And you can scan this into the scan and cut. And the file that is created inside the scan and cut, the FCM file, can be imported into a program called Simply Applique or BES4. Either one of those will work. And then that program on your computer with the touch of one button will turn it into an embroidery file, an embroidery applique file with the placement line, the tack down and the final satin or blanket stitch. And I did mine in a zigzag is the way I wanted to do mine, a really light zigzag. So it almost looks like raw edge applique. I'm putting all of that together. And yesterday I spent a lot of time fiddling around. The pattern on the bottom here has little pebbles for like, they look like little snowballs. And then the back of it is all stippled. 
Well, I got the bright idea that I would go ahead and make this ahead of time. Yo, I'm all over the map. I'm sorry. It's early. I would make this ahead of time. So I went ahead and pre-stitched. Let me put this under this camera. There are little pebbles. I don't know if you can see them. Can you see the pebbles all right there? Right? And then they're stippling. And it's turned out pretty well. I did this in the Luminaire. All right, so I figured out where I wanted to do that. I've got it backed with Pellon's 987F. I think it's going to be a bench pillow. Could be a wall hanging, I'm not sure. But I'm about ready to get started with stitching it all down. So, going to be working on that today. And finishing this project up so that I've got it as a demo you know I may have the chickens in the background for those live videos I might not I'm not sure and then I'll have this bench pillow to go look what you can make with this <laughs> oh my gosh you guys so speaking of that I will be on the stage at the Houston quilt festival this year end of October first part of November is it the first weekend in November third through the sixth, something like that. I will be in the All Brands booth. They sponsor Brother there, and so I'm gonna be there. And then when I'm not on stage, I'm gonna have my own little booth area in there. I wanna thank All Brands for the space, that's wonderful. My chickens are coming, so I've got like 60 days or less to get this thing quilted and uh, get it ready to go to the show. It's gonna hang up so you guys can come see my chickens in person. And if you are there, please stop by, come in, say hi, let's get pictures. I uh, really enjoy that. So there's just, you know, tons of moving pieces here. More coffee. All right, so that's my gnome for the holidays with the tree farm. That is just so incredibly cute, you guys. I can't wait to have it done and show you that. So I gotta get that finished. Thursday, the 15th of September, don't forget, 11 o'clock Central, there is the Dime event, and we're going to do an all-over quilting demo using their products in order to be able to do that. But if you have not registered yet, please do, because that is where you get the absolute best prices on Dime products. Got some fabric, Villa Rosa Designs. I like shopping at Villa Rosa Designs. They have free shipping. <laughs> yeah. So this is a new fabric line and it is from Fig Tree and Company by Moda, for Moda. Let's see. And it is called Christmas Stitched. This is adorable. It's a sampler panel, okay? It's just as cute as can be. Look at this. Isn't that adorable? As cute as can be. Okay, so I got this panel. These are four the Merry Christmas from Our Home to Yours with the stitching. That is, there are four of them on here. And then you've got an ABCD, you know, alphabet sampler and all that. So I got that. The, the plan with this is to use that in some placemats for my table for Let's Eat. This is a Villa Rosa Designs pattern. Let me get up here close. So this has a center panel a side panel and a little bit with sashing okay all of them do all right center panel a little a larger a medium and a small the large piece for the placemat is going to be this sampler there's another one that they have that i got i don't know what i'm going to do with it this is twas the night before christmas this is right christmas stitched this one is in all red. It doesn't have any green in it, but I got this one too. And then I got brown, this brown right here with small dots. This will be the sashing. These sampler panels right here may not be large enough for the pattern. So there is a, this is very light, but it's a background fabric it's got tiny, tiny little white dots on it, okay? And I will use this to size out this to get it so that it fits. I bought the brown and the green gingham. 
I thought that would make a, the little part up top too green, too brown, maybe, I don't know, might use something else. I got the red stitched panel. No, this is yardage, it's not a panel. So this may go in one of those pieces, I'm not sure. I went ahead and got the brown and the green gingham. I think I got a yard of each because this stuff goes with everything, right? So I got that and then the backing is red with little pine cones. I got enough of this backing, I can put it on the long arm and I can stitch all of my, I, I'll probably do two at a time, but, I'll, but that way they'll get long armed at, in one go, right? So that's what I'm gonna do with that. So I can let the machine do the work. And that what Power Tools with Thread is all about, letting the machines do the work. <laughs> Love that. So that's the only new fabric that I have gotten in. Although, remember I had told y'all that my uh, local quilt store was closing, Scrappy Quilter, in Shirts, Texas. Y'all, it's heartbreaking. Anyway, while I was there and I picked up all of those rulers that I had showed you guys, the um, block lock rulers. So I got all of those, but I forgot to tell you that I also got fabric while I was there. So let me show that to you. This was not, so this is regular yardage. It's a cream with red and blue dots. I just got this because it's a great background fabric for patriotic quilts. That was a remnant. I, I, I call it a remnant. I took the rest of the bolt, sorry. This is Belle Isle by Minnick and Simpson from Moda. So that's the cream with the red and the blue dots. Then I went to the 108s and got two yards of all of these. This is a Kimberbell 108 quilt back. So this is a Kimberbell 108 quilt back. It has that weave pattern in it in black. See that? So I got two yards of this. I usually get two yards of 108 because that's the same as four yards as a regular fabric and that'll do lap quilts perfectly. So I think this one is another, no, this is being my bonnet. This is from Riley Blake. This is a Lori Holt backing. It's a 108. I got two yards of that. It's the aqua and the brown plaid. And then I got this one. It is Swirling Splendor by Benertex. Just beautiful. It's kind of a salmon, is it orange? Orange, peach, salmon colored swirls. Another 108. I got two yards of this. Great backing. And same fabric in the baby blue and aqua green looking. It's all swirly. It's got, it looks like it's got some purple in it. Beautiful, beautiful fabric. Yeah, so I got those. They need to go on cardboards and over on my wall. Recently, I had to get, get a new computer. My main computer, where I do my video editing on and where I spend most of my day in front of, because it was not recording audio properly. It was having audio issues and you know so when I'm doing a tutorial for you guys and I'm going click here click here press this clap da 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 I'd go 15 20 minutes on a record and then go back to edit it and there's no audio at all and it was like ugh no and I'd have to re-record it restart the machine see if it worked it was just a very unreliable and a huge waste of time. So I had to invest in a new computer. And I had told y'all that and I got that cable to swap the stuff between the old and the new and that worked. Well, I actually ended up getting two of them. The first one turned out could not, the processor in it could not handle the audio and video editing needs because you need a really high processor in order to be able to do that and it was dragging and hanging and it had problems and it could only do one thing at a time and I need multiple stuff going on at any given moment. So I returned that one, Costco took it back, no problem. I had to wipe it, right? I had to wipe all my stuff off of it and go and do a lot of tech stuff I didn't want to have to do. And then got another one. <laughs> 
So that's the one I'm working on now and it's fine and it was more than twice the price of the one. I, it should have occurred to me when the laptop was only $6.99 that um, it's probably not what I need. I need something that, you know, is like twice that much in order to make it work for doing what I do. Because I record into a camera, not a phone or anything like that. Okay, so did all, then I had to do the whole transfer again from the old to the new and make it work and this and that. Needed to get my BES4 embroidery software onto the new machine and get it activated so that, I'm telling you guys, it's just tech takes so much time. That's why those nerds make all that money where you can just drop it off have them put it together and you go pay an enormous amount of money and pick it up and it's up and running. I mean, that's, I mean, I know how to do that. So I spent all a good five or six hours yesterday because I had to deactivate BES4 on the laptop with the bad audio and then uninstall it and then reinstall. I had to put it on the new laptop and reactivate it. I needed Norton, I've used all five licenses, so I needed to get Norton deactivated on that computer so I could activate it on this one. It came with McAfee for a year. I don't like McAfee, nothing wrong with the company, it's just not my preference. I'm more comfortable with Norton 360 and we have the subscription for that, so. It's always something, y'all, always. <laughs> then, my camera I'm talking to right now decided to start acting up with a crackle in the audio, driving me crazy. And you guys were making comments like, I'm getting a strange static. And I'm like, I know, I hate it, I'm sorry. So I had to order, I did not wanna buy a new camera. No, don't wanna do that. Because what I need in a camera, again, it's more than a $1,000 closer to two, and I don't want to do that. <sighs> so, I ordered an external microphone, a Rode microphone, and uh, popped it on the top. It looks like a little fuzzy hedgehog on top of the camera. <laughs> the initial test worked out fine, because I was like, oh, I hope, I hope it's not my software, I hope it's not the laptop. I hope it's just the, I don't know, you know, if it was just the onboard audio and it's something I can, you go, I'm boring you to death. I know. This is my life. This is my life, what I do for you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's talk about the cruise. Okay, great. So the, the cruise, I'm going to be teaching on a cruise January 22nd through the 29th and it is the Bahamas. And so that cruise, so in sail 11 has sold out. And I had told y'all that they were talking about doing a back-to-back -back with So and Sail 12. And I got word last night, it, it is a go. So if you could not get on the first cruise, another one is available and it will leave, I don't know where, I'm assuming Fort Lauderdale. I'm not 100%, I haven't seen the flyer yet. Then it's going to the Western Caribbean. So that is a go, and it will be another, I think it's seven days. So I'll be teaching on that one too. I wanna to thank Amy Bachman from Amy Sews out of Pittsburgh. You guys corrected me. <laughs> you know, I've never met her, she's awesome. Oh, her Scan and Cut Create Box subscription is available. Again, she's got some openings. Y'all, everything, just about everything I know on the Scan and Cut, I have learned from those classes. So if you have a Scan and Cut, you haven't taken it out of the box, maybe you're not sure what to do with it and you watch my videos or whatever, y'all, Amy, her teaching method is very much like mine. She's very personable, easy to understand. She does an unboxing where you get your goodies for that month. Matter of fact, the one she just sent, let me show you what it is. It came in a big blue envelope this time because it, what she's got wouldn't fit in the box. But you always get the best goodies and you will learn so much about your Scan and Cut. Even if you don't have an SDX model, if you have the old CM models, you guys, she gives you all of the info you need, you know, blade depth to turn it, whatever, and pressure. She tells you all of that too. But this one was all about cutting 
uh, paper shapes to make these, let me get up close, those rosettes, those flowers. And you can make these, she gives you some solid core paper. You got these sheets of solid core paper. And what solid core paper is, is, you know, if, if, with cheap paper, if you tear it, it's kind of white inside, not this stuff. This stuff is solid, like the, this is purple all the way through. So when you, when it cuts or tears, you're not going to see white on the edges. Now, I'm not a paper crafter, but people are making these flowers and it's a, it's a free design in the brother Scanicut, I understand, but you're, when you make these designs, when you cut these out and everything, people are putting them into shadow boxes and decorations on a table for weddings and showers and all of that around cakes. Very cute stuff. So we got all of this solid core paper and then we got true wool felt, okay? And wool felt is not the cheap stuff that you get at Michael's or Joann's. This stuff is true the way it's woven the way it's made it is wool felt so this is the stuff we used to get back in the day before it got outsourced somewhere you know to make the cheap stuff so she shows how to use all of this stuff in that class her classes you can go back and watch them again and again so the scan and cut create box class is every other month and then every other month from that is her serger class so if you have a serger and you are not sure how to use it, I highly recommend you look into getting into that as well. Okay, so let's get back to what came in the package. Right, so you get a card and it tells you what you get in your box. You get hard felt, soft felt, and Mariano wool came in that stack. And then you got solid core stock and bobby pins, pearl beads, and the bobby pins are to twirl the little petals and whatnot. You need hot glue, a rotary blade attachment, a drill. Okay, so you did get bobby pins and pearls if you wanted to twist all that thing around and all that. And then this, look at this kit we got. I'm going to put it over here under this camera. How nice is this? Looks like a dental tool kit, right? So these are tools that you would need to work. It is a dental tool. These are tools you would need to work with your scan and cut and they're a very pretty aqua color. You got tweezers, pointy pointy tweezers so that you can do weeding and everything. Here are some curved pointy tweezers. Okay, and then here is a dental scaling tool. <laughs> These are for weeding, you guys. Yeah pretty neat. She always comes up with the coolest stuff to put into the box. And I know October's is going to have a new mat for you to put your scan and cut on so it doesn't scrape up your table or your desk or whatever you might have it on. So you want to subscribe just to get that mat. Be cool. Yeah, she just has the, the neatest stuff. She shows how to cut leather and how to cut just Everything that the scan and cut can do that it way outside my realm because I'm again I do fabric. Your scan and cut can do so so much. It's crazy. Hey, have you guys seen the new serger coming out from Brother? It's self threading with the air jets, just like the baby lock does. So it will be out in November and I can't wait. I think I might have to get one. What have I been working on? Besides trying to get my gnome tree farm thing done. I was talking about how I printed everything out. That's on that dime print and stick target paper. If you guys are gonna be doing these projects where you've got multiple parts and pieces, you definitely want to have these so that you have the crosshair so you know exactly where it's going to fit. So I will be placing these on the fabric and then line up the cross. And that's, what, that's how you know it's going to stitch out in the right place. Some of y'all are probably going, what is she talking about? <laughs> I got the Hello Fall Quilt off the long arm. Turned out very nice with the pumpkins and loops from Urban Elements. So I've got the binding on it. I got the, I always put my bindings on, on the long arm. So I got that done and now I just need to get it stitched on to the back. I just put new thread and bobbin in my brother PQ 1500. 
I like to use that to do, let me show you guys, in case you're new. I got a lot of new subscribers. I'm so glad you're here, thank you. Here, so this is Hello Fall. This is just a panel, okay? And with a piano keyboarder, that's all I did. So I had showed you guys I was making Sweet Kitty of Autumn, more Target paper. I use this stuff all the time. So here's the little wall hanging. It turned out just adorable. And I have quartered the project with, let me get up under here. I put a friction marker, see that red line? I put a friction marker, top, bottom, and side to side, okay? I think this particular fabric was really supposed to be for the backing because I ended up not having enough of that other one. Oops. So I just grabbed another piece of orange fabric that I have that's got little dots on it. I've used it, it's a remnant. That will be the backing, okay? So I wanted to get this quilted. This is from Designs by Juju. This is her end-to-end -end quilting, and she's got cute little pumpkins and leaves, and this is perfect to quilt this particular top. So I chose the 10 by 10, and I printed it out, and then what I'm doing is I'm just aligning this. I'll show this in a video when I get to where I'm ready to work on it. I'm just aligning this to the side on the red and to the bottom. So this is gonna take me just over the sides on this edge and just over the top up here, okay? And that's exactly what you want when you do these, all right? So I wanted this scale. I didn't want anything super tight and small and this is gonna work out just perfect. I need to tape down the edge of the top of the fabric. I need to tape down the top of the fabric to the backing so that I don't get the foot caught up under there accidentally. But this is how I'm gonna align the pattern. I printed this out of Embrilliance, okay? You can use any embroidery software to print. And I printed this and there's the crosshair, so that's where I know I'm gonna start and then stitch number one, I'll do the needle plus minus, and I will jump to stitch number one and make sure it starts right there. And then the pattern will take off and do its thing. Okay, and it will do its whole thing and then it'll end right over here. And then I'll re-hoop and take this off and I will start right over here just like this. Okay, and this is center and hit the plus one and go here and then get it to start. Now the reason I do the plus one is because if this is not exactly on top of the last stitch from the previous run, I'm using a dime magnetic hoop, I can do a little tug, you know, a tiny little tug and get it so that it this exactly starts on that last stitch in the hoop. So this is in the works. And I shot a video in the beginning of my thought process about why I chose this size, how I chose this size, that kind of thing. Because a lot of you write me emails all the time and you're like, I don't understand how to pick the size. A lot of it has to do with your hoop limitations, the size on your hoop, you know, the scale of the design that you want, all of that. Okay, I am still working on the support group pattern. That is the Sew Along by the Fat Quarter Shop. And I got, this is to support breast cancer awareness. So I finished the fourth row, which is the row where you use the cup fabric to also make the straps. So there's, y'all, this is Tula Pink's Tiny Beasts fabric. Look, look at that rabbit. See that? How cool is that? I love this. So there's this one, and I took the pictures for the blog post I'm gonna put out on it. I'm scheduled to do that in October. And this, this is the hedgehogs. Look at that, very cool. And then this is the last top, the squirrels. How cool is that? Very neat. This is ready now for the finishing to put all the blocks together and put the strips in between and whatnot. And then I've got some cool embroidery I think I'm gonna do on this top. And uh, then get it on the long arm and whatnot. And 
Oh, so much to do. The Christmas tree skirt that I made from Designs by Juju, let me get it. So many of you loved this background fabric. This is Blossom by Christopher Thompson for Riley Blake. This has tiny little gray. See the tiny little gray dots? Itty bitty little gray dots, those are the little blossoms. A lot of you have asked me too about what thread is this right here for the swirls and the dots that are in the back. That is Isochords 0151. Now I, you need a cone of it because there's every single block uses that stitching in it if you want it all to be the same. I, I, li I like the same all the way across. Anyway, a lot of you wanted this fabric. As soon as I showed this earlier in August, it got sold out, gone. Fat Quarter Shop has it back in stock and I will link to it below the video and you can go. Now, the pattern does not tell you how much fabric you need because it tells you how big of a square you need in order to make the wedge piece for that particular hooping. Doing it that way uses a lot more fabric. If you do it the way I did, and I'll link to the video right up here where I showed you how I put these blocks, I put, you know, four or five of them on a strip and just did the whole strip at one time, you can get away with four yards of background fabric. You can do it with four yards, but you've got to conserve. Now, if you're going to cut a wedge and you do a whole big square, you have to trim it out and there's a lot of waste. Okay, so that's why I did it the way I did it to conserve fabric. I'm gonna let you guys know that is back in and I've still got links below the videos and I'll put them under this video too for the fabrics that you would need to put into your appliques. I understand too that the King Star Christmas Quartet is on back order and th that is coming in. Um, I've spoken with Dime and it is on the way, you guys. You know, you guys just bought it out. That's why y'all need to get these done in the summer and get your, you know, supplies and stuff ready because as soon as the holidays roll around, everybody's just wanting to get everything. Do you guys need a break? <laughs> We've been chatting for a while. <laughs> you wanted to know what I'm doing. Y'all can put me on pause and go get a comfort break. Don't forget, Fat Quarter Shop has their spooky box. My UPS store put a label on the front, so I'm sorry. Now, there is some adorable fabric in here, but you can go to the Fat Quarter Shop and the reservation fee is $4.95 and then you'll have a balance of $26 something or whatever when it comes in. But what's in here is super cute and I think you're going to like it. I think you're up to speed with my life. <laughs> you see why? I haven't been making videos. I got so much stuff going on. I'm having a ball. Time of my life, you guys. It's been a pleasure visiting with you and I hope you have stuff to do to keep you busy. Leave a comment below and tell me what you've been working on. If you've stuck with me this long, thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody uh, being part of the sewing world with me and we will talk to you soon, okay, you guys? <laughs> Y'all go sew something. Bye.